Gangstar, Gangstar, Gangstar. I'm trying to think of when I first heard uh, Words I Manifest, uh, the lead single off of Gangstar's first album. Uh, it's interesting that, that uh, Premiere, I've seen Premiere in different interviews stating that No More Mr. Nice Guy, the first Gangstar album, was produced in like two weeks. And he, he, he basically kind of dismisses it as really not the official uh, debut album but uh, Step in the Arena as being the original or the official first album. Words on Manifest, if I didn't hear it in December of that year, 89, then I heard it in the top within the first quarter of 1990. And I thought, okay, cool. I, I like the way this dude rhymes, uh, Guru. And the production was decent, you know. You have to understand, 89, the standards were very high in terms of production. You know, from 87, 88, 89, I mean, production was pretty high and especially with Molly Mall. Molly Mall was in his prime then in 89 for sure. By 1991, and I'd say even earlier than 1991 now, Just To Get A Rep uh, would have been out in 1990. Uh, I believe Just To Get A Rep was the lead single. I remember getting Step In The Arena. And, you know, you know there, were, there were songs on there that I loved. I mean, as I read my essay, dope shit. Uh, who's gonna take the weight? I was raised like a Muslim. Praying to the East. Uh, listen, Guru, Guru was just the right balance of the street shit and the consciousness. Like he was, he he was dope. Yeah, he was dope. God bless the dead. Guru, one of my favorites. One of my favorites, man. Cannot forget Guru, man. Rest in peace, my brother. Check the technique. Dope, dope, dope. There were better gangstar albums, obviously. Rest, but. That's really what set the tone to me. The premiere he was in 1991 is not the premiere he became by the mid to late 90s. But he, he definitely showed you. And he hadn't developed his signature sound yet. It, would, it wouldn't be until about 94, 95, or that greedy, greedy New York thing. Which is so interesting because Guru and Premier are not even from New York. <laughs> you know, that's common knowledge now, but that wasn't back then. I, I didn't realize that Guru was from Boston. I didn't realize that um, Premier was from Texas. I had no idea. So that year, they came to town. They came to town as uh, part of the EPMD tour. By 1991, they were three albums in, so they were the headliners. So it was EPMD as the headliners, Gangstar, Father MC, and DJ Quick of all people. I was like, DJ Quick? I remember thinking, who the hell is DJ Quick? I didn't know who DJ Quick was in 91. Yeah, I mean, you know, in 91, I knew, obviously, I knew about Ice-T, I knew about, um, I knew NWA or I mean, I knew about, you know, Cats Out of the West, Too Short, but I did not, I did not know who DJ Quick was. This is pre-internet days, so, you know, it's not like you could simply just, you know, Google someone's name. I didn't know who DJ Quick was. And anyway, so they came, they came, I believe it was... Varsity Stadium. Yeah, I believe it was Varsity Stadium uh, in downtown. Obviously, I was there for EPMD and Gangstar. Because Gangstar, at that point, were about two years in. Year and a half, two years into their career. They were on their second album. So when they came out, they had a very stripped-down set, you know. Uh, Premiere on the turntables, or on the tables, on the wheels of steel, and then Guru on the mic. And at the time, I read, I don't know what, it was the B-side single, the song called uh, credit is due. I believe it's called credit. Yeah, credit is due. And I was like, yo, that shit is dope. And it was, it's a song that appeared, we'll say on a later Gangstar project. But at the time, it was a song that was playing on the radio. And so they performed it. They performed it that night at the, um, the EPMD um, show, we'll say. We'll call it the EPMD show because they were the headliners. And I was like, yo, dope, dope, dope. But obviously they did. They did some other joints on there. They did um, Who's Gonna Take the Weight. Uh, I believe they did check the technique as well, but it was nice to see them. So 91 was my introduction to uh, Premier and Guru from a concert standpoint. So that was cool. That was absolutely cool. Absolutely cool. And then 1992, 1992, 1992 was a year that I was, I had a Walkman and I was wearing that, using that Walkman. Everywhere I went, I had that Walkman. And one of the albums I was playing in ridiculous rotation was Daily Operation, Gangstar's third album. Oh my goodness. And that's still my favorite Gangstar album. You know, songs like The Place Where We Dwell, 
ex girl to the next girl soliloquy of chaos bys boss your shit oh my goodness man that album is and it's so interesting to hear the evolution of, of premiere as a producer what i love the most about daily operation is the fact that it's so eclectic it's so it's so playful in terms of the production because when you think about everything that came after uh daily operation was just more signature premiere sound daily operation is him just like every beat sounds different he developed more of that signature sound from 94 onward and he still was able to mix it up but you you kind of knew a premiere beat when you heard a premiere beat you barely ever hear a premiere beat i would say from 94 onward that you didn't know was him like he just he just developed this signature sound but like i said daily operation 92 i killed that album that album got insane play love that album still it's 30 31 years later and i still love that album that's still my favorite gangster album not just that one of my favorite albums period you know you want to put it in a hip-hop context or just from an album standpoint one of my favorite albums without question and then 94 and then 94 hard to earn came out and you know i I, I didn't like Hard to Earn as much as I like Daily Out. In fact, there, there, there really there's no comparison. I think I learned to appreciate Hard to Earn more in the years following. Hard to Earn has some dope joints. I mean, um, Code of the Streets, uh, The Planet, where Guru talks about, that's where he talks about coming from Boston. He talks about coming from Boston and when he initially moved to New York. So. I was like, wow, he's not from New York. I think that's when I first heard or first learned that he wasn't from New York. And it talked about how he moved to um, New York in the early 80s, yeah, which is very interesting. But Guru was an older cat too. Like Guru, Guru came in the game, I believe he was like 27 in 89 when he came in the game. So Guru now, God bless the dead, would be like in his early 60s, I believe, yeah. Guru was nice, man. Guru's one of my favorite. Definitely a top 10 MC on my, my top 10 list of all time. Absolutely. But like I said, Hard to Earn didn't really... I mean, there were some joints. Speak Your Clout, oh my gosh, with him. Uh, so Guru, Little Dap, and J. Rue, dope. When they switched the beat for each MC, dope, dope. Premier, Premier was coming into his own in 94 in terms of, you know, like he was really starting to get attention. Mostly the voice is one of my favorite songs on that album. And then four years later, four they almost exactly I think I think Hard to Earn was like April '94, and then Moment of Truth I believe it came out in March, March of '98. I remember going down to um, EMI in Toronto to get my press copy, and um, I was like, holy shit, there's 20 songs on this album. I was like, wow. So they took four years off, so four year, a four year hiatus. And then they came back with a 20 track album. I was like, okay, uh, you know, I'm glad you guys are back, but I was like, 20 tracks cannot be, it can't, it can't every song can't be dope on that album. And it turns out I like 12. Moment of Truth is absolutely a top three gangstar album, without question. Even, the fa even though it has, you know, too many songs as far as I'm concerned. I mean, Moment of Truth, I mean, the, the title track, Moment of Truth, oh my gosh. What I'm here for, in memory of dope, 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 just dope. There's some dope songs on that album. Oh my God, work. Uh, you know my steez, dope shit, man. Absolutely one of my favorite Gangstar albums. Uh, and when I really think about it, it's probably number two after daily operation it probably is on my list of favorite gangsta albums it probably is when i think about it and then i got invited as media in 98 to a, a press junket in montreal for the smoking grooves tour and the smoking grooves tour was um public enemy cypress hill flip mode squad and gangstar or the gangstar foundation so it was basically all those, you know, it was people like um, Big Shug. It was um, in addition to Premier and Guru. Who else was there? Freddie Fox. Met Freddie Fox. It's funny. The publisher of the magazine I was writing for had met Freddie Fox and said, "Yo, D, come here, man." And I was, and he was there working out. I was like, "Holy shit, this guy's a tank!" 
you know, bumpy knuckles, man. He was just a cool cat. He was cool. He had a smile. I was like, oh, big up, Freddie, man. Big up, Freddie. Yeah, man. Freddie Fox. I, I first heard Freddie Fox on, I believe it would have been Money in the Bank. Money in the Bank, produced by Large Professor on Cool G Rap's second album, 1990, man. Dope shit, dope shit. But yeah, so I met Freddie. I also saw Guru and Premiere. And I remember seeing Guru. It's just this kind of it's like this lounge area where all you know the media and and all the different hip hop artists were, you know, because there were interviews taking place there. I actually I actually interviewed MOP um, within that space. But I saw I saw Guru at a certain point, and I was like, and I had to stop him, you know, not on no groupie shit, but I was like, yo, I said, brother man, you don't get your props, you know, you, you dope. And he just kind of gave me this look like, all right, cool. I've heard about Guru because I know people who, who, who worked at the record labels and they, they dealt with him. And they say he's a really good guy. And, and, I, and I know he's a good guy. Every MC that you like, you like for different reasons. Sometimes you just like the lyrics, you like the delivery, you like the style. But with Guru, I felt Guru. I really, like I felt, I felt the heart in his lyrics and his delivery. Like when you hear a song like Moment of Truth, it's real. You knew he was real, man. And so, no matter what energy he was, you know, he was kind of doing that kind of aloof, cool guy thing when I took when I gave him his props. But I'm glad because, you know, obviously, you know, 12 years later, big up to Guru. I'm glad I, I'm glad we crossed paths. I'm glad I was able to give him, as I say, give him his flowers. So I was able to give him his flowers in '98. Big up to Guru, though. Absolutely one of the, you know, one of my favorites. Top 10, top 10 for sure top 10 without question without question but yeah the show was cool though so I, at the time i was a huge Busta rhymes fan yeah and so flip mode was there obviously gangstar foundation meeting freddie fox giving props to guru 1999 so 1999 full clip comes out and that's the the best of gangstar and it had you know songs off of every album i think i think words i manifest was the only song off the first album but then it had songs obviously off of uh step in the arena daily operation hard to earn moment of truth and then it had bonus tracks there were some tracks there was some there was a lead single or well, full clip oh yeah full clip was dope the, the title track and um Discipline was on there as well with Total. And then in 2000, they came back to Toronto. Um, they, they came back with um, with Shaclair. Shaclair, Toronto based uh, MC. Shaclair was popular at the time. I think it was a little late for me because I'm thinking the, the album came out in 98, but they're coming here in 2000, so two years later. But, you know, I went, I went, and I, you know, when I think about the 98 show, the 98 show, they absolutely had more spirit to them than they did when I saw them in 91. So they'd grown, because, you know, that's like seven years later. Uh, in 2000, I don't know. I, I, I think um, I think I went because, I'm, you know, I'm a Gangstar fan. I think the show was decent. It wasn't mind-blowing. But then Guru was never this exciting guy to watch on stage. He was dope to listen to. And he had he had decent stage presence, and he really was a more understated performer. He wasn't this rah rah jumping around on stage. The 2000 show was decent, it was decent. Um, but I kind of feel like it was a turning point as well, because I'm thinking, okay, you know, it was another. It was basically even longer this time. So, moment of truth is 98, and then the owners came out in 2003. So we're talking five years now, and I did not like the owners the only song i liked off that album would have been skills yeah i like skills guru is still doing this thing i just think premiere by 2003 was not the premiere of 98 or 94 or 92 or 91 he, i feel that, that i think that five-year um hiatus was too long and you know unlike the um the four-year hiatus between hard to earn and moment of truth he just he didn't come back with the goods like the beats were not were not on the level of 98 and then 2010 uh i remember i i was dating a young lady and she 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 said dave did you hear that guru died of a what what do you mean guru died yeah so he passed he passed in 2010 and 
that was a big one. That was a big one for me. Even though, like I said, because all the years I've been listening to Gangstar for, you know, it was a, it was a big thing to, to hear that he got, he passed. It was a big thing for sure. Uh, and then in 2019, you know, in 2019, this is nine years after his passing, um, Premier was able to buy some some verses. So obviously these are songs that were recorded, but he just wanted the vocals of Guru. So he bought these vocals from uh, this Solar guy, because this is who Guru was um, collaborating with at the time uh, before his passing. And so he bought a collection of vocals uh, and obviously he didn't need the production but he got the vocals of Guru and put out a new Gangstar album so he produced a whole new set of beats and matched them up you like, when you hear the songs off of one of the best yet which is the you know posthumous posthumous album and one of the best yet sounds like they were in the studio together like I have to say Primo did a masterful job at pairing up these vocals these pre-recorded vocals or previously recorded vocals of gurus with his beats you cannot believe that these songs were not recorded with the two of them in the studio like old times one of the best yet even though it was a posthumous album it really is one of the best gangstar albums like big up to gangstar for sure big up to gangstar guru top 10 for sure top 10 so let's say from six to ten so six i would say Nas, number seven I would say Pharaoh Monch, number eight I would say Raskas, number nine I would say Genius, and number ten I would say without question. That's my that's my top six to ten. Top six to ten. As far as producers, I'd say Molly Mall of all time. Molly Mall number one. I would say Premiere number two. First of all, Premiere, you can't even you can't even play around with the amount of beats, quality beats this guy's made since really I would say you could go back to daily operation. And even some of the beats he had on um, Step in the Arena. But I would say Molly Mall number one, Premiere number two, Large Professor number three. Those are my top three. You wanna go four, you go Pete Rock. And number five, I would say Q-Tip. Yeah, without question. But, you know, Guru, number 10 on my list of all-time MCs. And Premier, number two on my list of all-time hip-hop producers, without question. But big up to Gangstar.